Okay, we're starting on our brownies, and this is the Misa and Plaza. So here's the mixer ready to go. And then we've got walnuts. Uh, we're gonna use one cup of walnuts and put it on the finer grinding uh, setting in the walnut grinder there. Then we have Giardelli, in this case, semi-sweet chips. You can also use the 60% chips or even the 72% chips, depending on how dark chocolate tastes you want. I find that with the walnuts, the combination with the uh, uh, semi-sweet chips is better. You'll need four eggs. We're going to put the eggs in this bowl with a small amount of salt, just a pinch of salt, even though the recipe calls for a half tablespoon, I think. We're going to uh, have a, a teaspoon of vanilla ready to go uh, to put in with the uh, mixture of the eggs and the uh, chocolate that we're about to make. Uh, and then uh, we're going to melt uh, one bar of 100% uh, baking chocolate, that's uh, four ounces, with uh, two half sticks of butter, that's eight tablespoons, or a one half cup of unsalted butter. Then uh, I've got the sugar tin ready to go. We're gonna be using two cups of sugar, and I have the flour tin ready to go, and uh, towards the end, we'll be putting in one cup of flour. Then we'll mix in the chips and the walnuts, and uh, then we'll be ready to bake at 350. I always set the timer for 29 minutes and 30 minutes, and then I go 29 and a half minutes. And right at the end, we'll be needing an implement that will allow us to cut all the way around the edges so that the top doesn't crack. This is our one cup of ground walnuts, and the next thing I'm gonna do is take the butter, put it in the microwave for about 13 or 14 seconds, and I'm gonna use the paper of the uh, butter to butter this pan, just on the bottom, just a little bit on the sides. Then I'm going to put the butter into the first two cup measuring cup I'm going to melt it a little bit more and then I'm going to break up the chocolate into that and I'm going to heat it on half power for about a minute, take it out, stir it, do that again as much as needed until the chocolate and butter are melted nicely. This is the uh, chocolate and the butter that I've broken up into the measuring cup ready to go into the microwave. Notice I slightly overdid it on the butter uh, with the microwave there so the pan is not quite perfect. but good enough. This butter melting technique is uh, to take advantage of the fact that the butter will get melted faster than the chocolate and then towards the end you can just keep stirring until the last of the chocolate is melted that way you don't overheat the chocolate. This is just a more convenient way than doing it over a double boiler or any of the other methods. While I'm doing the microwave, I've put a few grains of salt into the bottom of this mixing pan and then I'm going to break my four eggs into it. The chocolate's not melted quite enough yet. I'll need maybe another 30 to 45 seconds and I should be stirring. This is after another 30 seconds. You can see that I'm stirring it up and you can see that some of the chocolate is melted. So I'm just gonna keep working this a little bit more until I get it to the point where all the chocolate is melted. You can now see that the chocolate is nice and melted. I'm feeling with my fork to make sure that there are no pieces left. There might be a slight bit more. I have to mix it up a little bit more. Sometimes you have to get another 10 or 15 seconds in the microwave. If I were making cappuccino chocolate chip brownies, I would mix in one tablespoon of uh, powdered cappuccino uh, powder at this step. Okay, and there are my eggs in the mixing bowl. I've got my two cups of sugar ready and I've got my vanilla ready. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to mix this up and, and uh, get it to go from that bright yellow color to a pale yellow color. That just starts the process of getting some air into the eggs and mixing them up. Then I'm going to slowly add the sugar a uh, little by little until we get a nice thick uh, yellow uh, consistency uh, base and that's when I'm going to then fold in the chocolate, going to add the flour and then I'm going to add the nuts and the chocolate chips and I'll be ready to put it in the pan and put it into the oven. So at this point, let's uh, turn on the mixer here. Starting to change color to a color yellow. This is 
where I need a, a third cameraman. Try to get the sugar mixed in each time. You can add it in so it gets pretty thoroughly because you want the sugar to be evenly suspended within the egg. This is where you get the air and the brownies and so that you don't end up with flat brownies. So you can get impatient and mix it too fast and then you may end up with flat brownies. some of it at the side and mix it in. <clears throat> this, by the way, is the uh, technique for sponge cake and for lots of other desserts that start off with, with these kinds of steps. Unfortunately, I got some kind of particle in here, so I better take that out. I don't know where that came from. Just put that over here in the sink right now. <clears throat> Axel's food bowl is in the sink. <clears throat> All right, so I still have a tiny bit of sugar here. You see how thick it looks now? It should feel thick as well. So. A lot of the variation comes from how big the eggs are. If you get these are great A, large size diamonds. Okay, and then I'm going to just um, put in the vanilla here. You can do this with a stand mixer, but I think it's better to do it by hand, then you can really control it better. Okay, now I'm going to uh, put my chocolate in, and um, depending on how you've melted it, it may be thicker or less thick. So right Let's use our spatula here and try to get every last bit of the chocolate that we can into the bowl. And then I'm going to use a technique of folding it in, which means that I'm going to basically keep the spatula horizontal. And I need a little bit more here. By the way, I always put water in this as soon as possible because the chocolate is harder to, uh, to clean up. And the same thing with the, the beaters, but I won't do that right now. So here's my bowl, and I'm going to move my spatula in in this kind of technique here. I'm basically keeping it flat and I'm running it around. I'm circling the bowl here. I like to get it until it's mostly mixed, but there's no need to go all the way to get it thoroughly mixed. So the idea is you mix it as little as possible to get the results. Uh, so think of it being like a, a tiger stripes or something at this point. Okay, so that's, that's good enough for that mix. So you should be able to see. This is King Arthur all-purpose unbleached flour and I've got a scale here and to get exactly one cup I'm going to put in 120 grams. I'm just going to sprinkle that on and I'm watching to make sure that I don't get too much. And so we're getting close here. It's about 115. I need about five more grams. There's 119. 120. And that, that's by far the easiest way to measure flour. I'm going to now use the same folding technique that I just used to fold the flour in. 
So this is how it looks partially folded, and the more folding you do, the more gluten you're, you're going to form, which is going to make the brownings tough. So this is about the point where I put in both of the walnuts and the semi-sweet chips. Uh, if I were making the uh, peanut butter chips, I would leave the walnuts out and put in peanut butter chips at this point. I've added these in and I'm going to fold them in just the way I did before, make sure they're thoroughly mixed in. You can see that my oven is preheated. Typically, if I am more efficient, I can get all of this mixed up just in time for the oven to have preheated. So the batter is ready to go. I've got my pan. I'm about to transfer the batter into the pan. Okay, so now the batter is ready to go in. <clears throat> Note that this has a lot of mix-ins in it. Usually I only have one uh, bag of chips or um, maybe a bag of English toffee or something like that. I also make a variation where I have uh, mint chips and chocolate chips and um, crushed candy canes on the top to make Christmas brownies. This is a point where you get to lick the pan when nobody is looking. So here is the finished product and you can see when I zoom in that I've used my uh, spatula to go around the edges and make sure that they are separated so that we don't get cracking. So there's an instance of cracking but if I hadn't done that I would have had cracking all over the top and now I'm going to let it cool uh, and after the bottom of the pan is cool then you can sample them. They'll be very gooey uh, almost like eating molten lava cake. Uh, I usually store them in the refrigerator. Once they've cooled completely in the refrigerator, all the chips will go back into becoming a little bit crunchy, giving the brownies a completely different texture. And then uh, if you take them out and warm them up a little bit in the microwave, you can also make them back to being gooey in the middle and crunchy on the outside, which is the best way to eat them. So enjoy.